Hey everybody, what's going on? I'm for, what does that smell? Oh no. Oh, oh. it's my quilt. You know, I was gonna talk about the history of backpacking, but I think we're gonna switch gears and we're gonna have to watch that thing. Hey everybody, it's Frozen and welcome to Outdoor Adventures. Thanks for joining me today. If you haven't done so already, consider subscribing to this channel and click that notification bell so you know when I post new content. Washing down gear is one of those things I think every backpacker dreads, at least I know I do. The whole process is very repetitive, it's very time consuming, and if you're not careful, you could completely mess up your down quilt or sleeping bag. Now personally, I don't wash my down gear until I notice there is a bit of a performance issue. Maybe it's not lofting up as much, or perhaps maybe it's not keeping me as warm as it did when it was new. A little word of caution before we begin this video though, this does take quite a long time. So if you don't have several hours to devote to this, you may wanna pick a different day. All right, with that being said, let's get started. First thing you wanna do before you wash your quilt or your sleeping bag is to head on over to your manufacturer's website and take a look at the care instructions. See if they have any special instructions. For instance, this is a hammock gear quilt and what they recommend is, if you can see that most of the baffles on this guy run vertically, they run up and down. There are some horizontal baffles like this one on the top and the couple on the bottom for the foot box. They actually recommend tying these off uh, just like this, I'll show you in a second, to avoid the down migration. So we're actually gonna get a piece of zingit that I have laying around and we're just gonna make like a, a shoelace knot, whatever that knot ends up to be. I'm not a knot guy, but uh, they actually recommend tying it off until you're completely done with this whole process, not only in the bathtub, but also in the dryer, which we're gonna do later. And you wanna do this because in the dryer, what will happen is, since the dryer only goes one way, typically on most dryers, uh, all your down will be pretty much in, in one direction. And I've noticed it before on my Enlightened Equipment quilt, and I'm gonna do everything I can to stop that down migration. So if they say to do this, do it. All right. The next step is to actually pack it back up in the stuff sack that you typically use. And the reason why I'm doing this is because when you bring it out into the water, it's gonna float like a boat. Like it's, it's insane how uh, buoyant these quilts can be. So, all right, we're just gonna fill the bathtub up with cold water. Just fill it up with the amount of water that you think that you're gonna need to wash your quilt. Don't go overboard, but don't go too little as to not be able to fully submerge your quilt. Then what we're gonna do is, today I'm actually using Nick Wax Downwash Direct. This is for regular down and um, waterproof down. I have the hydrophobic down, uh, so this is what I'm gonna be using. Nick Wax actually sent this to me, but I've been using this product for years, along with several other their products. I really do recommend them, but there are several other products I'll leave down in the description if you're not a fan of Nick Wax or just wanna explore some cheaper options. Actually, what we're gonna do is we're gonna shake this up for the bathtub, we're gonna use 100 milliliters, so about one third of the bottle. Okay. So I'll be using latex gloves for these, just because the last time I did this, it actually dried my hands out. I was foolish and didn't use gloves. It's not gonna kill you, but your hands will really, really be dry if you don't. I can see these gloves are gonna be real helpful, let me tell you. <laughs> all right, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna squish, try to squish all the air out of the quilt that we can possibly squish out. And then we're just gonna set this in the water and let it out into the water in the solution. And then we're gonna open it up and just pull the quilt out. And you can see we're getting a lot of air, all those air bubbles out of there. All right, it's looking pretty good now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip this over. Um, I should mention, whenever you're handling your quilt, this fabric, this, uh, what is it? I have the lighter fabric too. I think it's like 10D or 7D. 
It's very delicate, so make sure you handle it with extreme caution. Don't let it support a lot of weight. Just kind of be very gentle with it. I'm gonna let this guy sit and soak up all the water for about 20 minutes, and then I'll be back with you. All right guys, so it's been 20 minutes. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna roll this over. Be very, very careful. Again, you don't wanna ruin your quilt. All right, so up close, this is what I'm doing. I'm just going like this. I'm just massaging the dough, right? That's all I'm doing, just making sure I cover the entire quilt and getting the air bubbles out of the down. All right. All right, gonna let that sit for another 20 minutes and then we'll start the drying process. All right, it's been another 20 minutes. What I'm gonna do, those gloves aren't working by the way, so I'm just gonna start using my hands. We're almost done with this process anyway. We're just gonna let the, uh, the tub drain out here. All right, now that the tub's completely drained, we're gonna start pressing the water out of the quilt very gently. Uh, if you just use a wall on this one, it'll work fine. Don't, um, don't wring it though, just press it. You don't wanna wring it. You're basically doing the same motion that you did uh, when you were getting the solution, the cleaning solution into the quilt. Now we're gonna do um, warm water, not hot, but just warm water. All right, let it drain. Keep kneading it throughout this process. What we're trying to do is we're trying to get all the suds out of the water. You'll have to do this a couple times here. Let it drain again. This probably takes four or five times to get, and then we're uh, good to go. You can see that there's still almost, let me find an area that's actually. Okay, we're getting pretty good. Probably one more time of this, and then all that stuff will be out. You just wanna go until you, you see that the suds are completely gone. All the suds are out of the quilt. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna spread this guy out very gently. Right now it's really, really delicate. It's as delicate as it can possibly be throughout this whole process. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna start pressing the water out. The more water you can get out with this stage, the better, because it's going right into the dryer next. So we're using the bathtub wall to press the water out, right? And it's just running down the wall. Okay, now we're gonna place the quilt in the dryer. And make sure you set it to air dry. You don't want any heat on this whatsoever. If you can't put it on air dry, do it on the lowest heat setting possible and check it probably every 30 minutes. Along with the quilt, we're gonna actually toss in some tennis balls. And the reason why I'm using tennis balls is right now the, the down inside, the insulation inside the quilt is really clumped up and as the um, as the quilt dries, it's going to remain clumped up unless you provide some kind of agitator. And the tennis balls acts as the agitator and it will help, won't do it completely, but it will help break up that, that clumpy down insulation. All right, so we're going to set this up for an hour, right? An hour for the first round and then we're going to check it and we're going to see how the down's doing. All right, first round is done. Let's see how we're doing. Oh, down feathers. We're already starting. All right, this thing's still pretty wet. I'd say it probably has another four hours easily, but um, I can feel the down being really clumpy. At least I can handle it now. Uh, we're gonna start unclumping the down. Let me take it out to the hallway and I'll show you how to do that. 
Okay, guys. All right, so you're gonna feel like these little hunks of down, right? You wanna really try to just pick those apart gently with your hands. It's not gonna be perfect. Uh, it will get a lot better as this thing dries, but what you don't want is for these to become too hard. Let me show you this up close. Here is a ball of down right here. It's a ball of down. We're gonna take the sides and we're just gonna gently, gently, gently pull the down apart, right? We're not gonna like rip the feathers. That's not what we're trying to do. We're trying to separate the feathers, okay? All right, so one huge tip. Every single time that you put your quilt in the dryer, you check your heat settings and make sure they're completely off or they're on the lowest setting. What you don't want to do is accidentally hit that high heat button and you're going to melt your entire quilt. So check back on this another hour. It's still pretty wet, uh, but we think we're on our way. All right, so after about four hours in the dryer, let's take a look. Oh yeah, look at that fluffy quilt. Oh yeah. Oh, and it doesn't smell like butt anymore. That's excellent. All righty. All right, so the last phase on the cleaning of the quilt is the down migration. Now, just from what I can see, it doesn't look like I'm gonna be migrating a lot of down, but let me show you how to do it anyway. All right, everybody, the last and final step of this washing drying process is to migrate the down. And what that simply means, I just wanna make sure the down is evenly distributed. Because I originally tied the string around the baffles that were recommended by Hammock Gear, there's not a lot of down migration, but just in case that isn't in your process or perhaps your down has shifted, let me explain the process. So if you have a light source, you can use a window. It's nighttime right now because I waited too long to film this, but this is one of my lights that I use downstairs in the studio. Um, if you just hold your quilt up to the top of the light, you can see that the down, well, hopefully you can see that, you can see the down's about right here, right? And you just wanna make sure that it's evenly distributed after, after you know, getting it out of the dryer. Uh, sometimes one baffle will have more down uh, than another baffle. Just try to keep that even. We're pretty good at the top here already. I kind of already went over this quilt. Um, but for those that have some down migration problems, let me show you how to fix it. Typically, right toward the top or the bottom of these baffles, there's gonna be a little quarter-sized opening. You're going to wanna fish. Let's see, this is really hard to show. You wanna take your, your fingers, you wanna fish the down uh, from one baffle to the other baffle. So the way to do that is you shove your finger through the baffle and then pull it out the other side, so to speak. You wanna do that without breaking the stitching in here. So this is my seam right here. So you can see it stops right here. That's, that's where the opening is on that seam. And so I really wanna just take some of that down and shift it through there and try to get them as even as possible. After you're done, you wanna just go like this and spread out the down, shake it very gently. You don't wanna do anything rough and just kind of spread out the down evenly. This process typically takes me about an hour for a 40 degree quilt. It will take longer if the down is completely destroyed. But if you did all the steps from your manufacturer uh, and you tied that string above those little openings, the down shouldn't have shifted that much. So as long as you keep maintaining where your down is after each trip, you won't have to spend hours upon hours migrating your down to all the different baffles. I know this was a really confusing process when I first did it, but every time it just gets easier and easier. Just the important thing to remember 
is as long as you're careful, you're not gonna screw up your quilt. It's a very easy, repetitive process. It just takes a long time to do it. So if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. Also let me know how your cleaning went. I'd love to hear about it. Thanks everybody. I'll see you in the next one. We're also gonna get some new tennis balls, all right.